So I kind of got the idea for this build from uh, actually another be a YouTuber who was doing a build on uh, it was a Kama, which is very similar to this weapon. It's a few actually the base weapons about the same, which basically they were grass cutting scythes turned into weapons, or a Kama is essentially a grass cutting scythe. I made one years and years ago, or not really years, it's one about three years ago. I haven't been doing this that long, but anyway, about three years ago I made one. I again forged it, but this one was made out of a. Uh, you know, Lord Sawblade like this one. I'm like, that actually be kind of cool because it kind of had the teeth along the front or on the top. I'm like, that's kind of cool. I want to do it. But I want to make mine just a bit different. So instead of making a comma like he has and making it what's driven for as a Kasari Gama, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Basically the same weapon, but it has a chain on the end with a weight. If I remember, or not if I remember, but if I looked up and what I found is correct, it's basically you wrap the chain around the enemy's weapon as a means of kind of disarming them. And then of course you go to work with the blade. Not certain how historical the weapon is. I'm not an expert on Japanese weapons or fighting. I mean, I'm sure someone's tried it at least once, but uh, yeah. My basic strategy is cut it out of the saw blade and then uh, I'm gonna make a handle. I plan on this just an ax handle I've had lying around my shop since before I've been using this shop. Not sure why I got it, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. Basically, I'm just gonna cut a slot down it and then use the this is my tang Pin it in place in several places probably with brass And then of course it's not gonna go all the way down I plan on putting like in you know eyelet or something in it to attach my chain But I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. My main start is Cutting this out with my end grinder Hopefully that won't take too long, but uh, My experience with the machete. This is gonna be a lot more difficult than I think so
So, ignore the pile of junk. Or not junk, I'll say tools. So this is the most popular to build. Everything's a mess. And so is my life. <laughs> anyway, now that everything nice and cut out, removed a few of the teeth there just to kind of give it a, you know, so it goes into whatever it is you're going into. I don't judge. <laughs> anyway, so a few of the teeth, teeth there to give it an apocalyptic look, of course, and the original video had them. This one, I'm not certain why, but some of the teeth look, they've either been broken off or ground down. It's not consistent all the way around, so I'm guessing they were broken at some point. These are old blades, probably older than me. Maybe even older than anyone watching the video, who knows. But, now that that's done, ready to make the handle. I got a couple marks here, kinda see that one. This is where I'm basically gonna cut it off with a handsaw. This is gonna be my base handle. I wanted to the editor where it kinda curves up just a little bit to kinda give my hand a little bit of a stop. And then of course that goes just above, or just about to the end of it. The handle I actually made on it is the length I would want to hold. Surprisingly, I thought I wanted it a little longer, but short's actually pretty nice. But I don't want to go all the way because I'm gonna have something drilled into the wood here that's gonna hold on my bit. So I'm gonna actually chop that down a little bit. And then of course, you know, put it in the tort, or put it in, take the torch to it to where I can actually drill through it because hardened steel is almost impossible to drill. But get a little ahead of myself. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this out and I probably won't film it because I'm not certain how I'm gonna do it. So I'll probably through a bunch of different weird methods. But I think I'm just gonna hold up like this and try and take a saw and cut straight down. Hopefully that doesn't go horribly. Note to self, if you're actually you know, not gonna bolt down your vice because it's not actually yours, remember to clamp it down so it doesn't move on you. Self, invest in a handsaw that was made before the 1970s. Not before, after. It's been a long day. I just kind of had the weirdest idea. I don't know if it'd work, but after I cut this out, I realized that this would actually make a pretty good club. Put some sort of like metal, uh, metal plate or stud at the end of that. Yeah, switch hands here. Yeah, that's that's better. I may be dexterous, but I'm primarily right-handed. May use that, and you could really. Really throw that into something. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I have this nice and cut out here. Not sharpened yet, just because, uh, well, I figure it's better to after the assemble for something like this. But uh, got some holes drilled. That was a real pain. I ended up, I heated it up just, you know, hot enough, I thought, to remove any sort of heat treat. That didn't work. The drill bit did not want to go through it. My drill was dull, so I got a new one anyway. It was already dull before I started, so, you know, anyway. That still didn't work, so I <laughs> heated it up two more times. That finally worked. Also got some holes in here, drilled. Now my basic strategy is to take this pile of JB Weld here, just kinda, you know, smear it all over here. Yeah, give, give it a nice coating, both sides. Try not to stick it on my really dirty table. Probably clean that at some point. Will I? Maybe. I mean, if you've been watching for a while, you, you've seen my workstation, it is not clean. Okay, now that you have that nice and smeared with JB Weld, just going to uh, stick it on the, here. If, if it, yeah. Jeez. 
Might want to uh, tap it with a hammer. Solution to so many problems. Humanity's best invention right here. Okay, now I'm ready to put the pins in. Once, of course, you make sure they're nice and lined up. I have something here that fits into that. There we are. Just to make sure I got the. There it goes. Get the holes nice and lined up. Take the pins. Put some uh, JB Weld on them. Stick them in place. Kind of twist them as you go to kind of give an even coat. That's a start. Yeah, something like that. Of course, do both sides, obviously. Now we wait. Also, it's time for food. It's like late at night. Okay, now I have my uh, everything epoxied, pinned in place. What I'm gonna do now is give this a little bit of an edge, so that way, you know, it's not just a pick, which essentially it's using as a weapon anyway, but you know. I do recommend if you're making one of these or any sort of scythe weapon like this, is leaving kind of this part unsharpened because uh, if your hand slides up, if that's sharp, well, you just cut your finger. I've seen a lot of people say you get dull ones in practice, and while well, that is good advice with most weapons anyway, but uh, it's just better to leave that dull anyway, just so, you know, you don't run the risk. Plus, you're not gonna be cutting anything with that, more than likely. So, I'm uh, gonna sharpen up that. Then I'm going to uh, kind of burn this part, lightly singe it, give it a nice look, a little bit of linseed oil, just to, again, seal it up. And then I'm gonna take the end of it here and wrap in paracord. Since it's an apocalyptic weapon-ish, you know, you can't have those without paracord. It's like a necessity. It's, it's a rule. You've played video games, probably. And then from there, I'm gonna go and attach the chain.
Okay, so now for adding the paracord, I have a, well, what's it called, a clove hitch. Don't know why it's called that, don't know if it means anything. I'm uh, not a Boy Scout. Uh, also, since I'm not a Boy Scout, I am not gonna show you how to make that. You can look at yourself online. If you try and follow my instructions, you will never figure it out because it took me like five tries and it's quite simple, really. Anyway, not a Boy Scout, never have been. So uh, now I'm going to just wrap this around. I have a nice line of JB Weld, as you see, if I can keep everything on camera. And uh, that's just gonna keep the paracord from kind of slipping a little bit, just because it's not gonna go all the way down, so it's, you know, stops here. And then I'll just tie it off with something and then burn it to where it, you know, stays. The benefits of having a torch in the shop, which I work with steel, so of course I have a torch. Anyway, I'm just gonna uh, just start wrapping this up. Stop, you know, stop talking and you know, do do my job. This isn't a job. I'm not getting paid. I, I literally do this strictly because I love doing it. Also, be careful if you've already sharpened the blade, because uh, yeah, you don't you don't want to get cut. Make sure you keep everything pulled tight, but don't stick your hand in the JB weld. It's, even though it dries, you know, slowly, it's still kind of a pain to get off. Okay, I just tied it off with another clove hitch and then took my torch and melted it into one piece. So uh, this string is not going anywhere. Let me uh, change hands here. So if you wanted just like a post-apocalyptic comma, this is basically it. Now to turn it from that into a Kasari gamma, really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, well, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, to start with, we're gonna attach uh, this, uh, I think it's called an eyelet. Probably, possibly, I'm not really certain. Basically, loop with threads. I'm gonna start by taking, I'll pick that up later. I'm gonna start by just taking a drill with a 7 16th bit, centering this up as best I can. And uh, if you're smart, you'll have a vise that's strapped down and not one you have to clamp in place. I chose mobility over being sturdy. Not, not my best choice. Probably should figure out how deep I need to go. Oh yeah, that should be enough. Just take this and screw it in place. These coarse threads, I fear this would be a little easier than it is. It is, it is not. Maybe it'd be easier if I left it in the vise. Okay, once you have that attached, you're ready for your uh, chain or rope or whatever. I just went to the hardware store and got five foot of chain. 
because all the stuff I have here is short or very heavy and also somewhat short. So for my weight, I just literally got a larger eyelet or whatever, just with regular uh, bolt threads, thread with half inch. I got this connector piece, I have it threaded on. And I've got another one here. I'm gonna open it up. Stick it on my length of chain, which the chain is just slightly too tight so the hammer opened the two edges. If you just get a larger chain, it'll be fine. Now you can't use chains like, you know, whips like you see in video games and I don't really see it in movies too much, most of just video games. Just because the energy is distributed between all the lengths and it just doesn't work very well. But for this uh, concept where you just have it wrapping around things and grabbing, it works really well. One moment, I'm gonna go hammer that open a little more. Okay, I'm back. That worked a lot better. And I found with this, that worked a lot better. The other one was a little larger, and kind of put it in through the corner. But then just screw it closed, and there you go. You got your chain. Let me, uh, let me zoom out. And by zoom out, I mean move the tripod backwards because this is a phone. And zoom as far as you can go, it's the only way they focus. There you go. You got yourself a nice uh, post apocalyptic uh, Kasari Gama. Again, I'm not sure how effective this is as an actual weapon. I guess it is a historical one, is from what I can tell. Not a fantasy ninja one you see in a lot of stuff now. Which, hey, if this was actually effective, that's cool. I mean, I can see the appeal of it. Wrap this around your enemy and kill him with this. I could think of worse weapons, really. But I'm not gonna lie, with this chain on here, it does feel very awkward just, you know, using it like a pick. But I'm sure with a bit of practice and someone with a lot more skill than me could probably make this into a very deadly weapon. So, uh, time to go hopefully not hit myself in the back of the head. So if you do decide to copy this design and do this, don't hit yourself in the back of the head. That's never good. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again next time.